We're covering some of the basics of the nervous system. Remember, there's four types of tissue in the body. Epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. I've done a few videos on muscular system, and now we're moving on to nervous system and special senses. I've been teaching anatomy for about 24 years now. I try to simplify it for you. You can also click on the study guide below. But we're looking at starting at just the basics before moving into the structures and the concept besides the physiological side. Let's understand the breakdown of the nervous system. Let's start by just understanding there's two systems in the body for the nervous system. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system I've often referred to as the parents. They're the ones that are leading everything and coordinating the activities of the body. That's the brain and the spinal cord. So central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, simple as that. They can do three things. They can sense, they can interpret, and they can react. And most of the time it's interacting with the peripheral nervous system, the peripheral towards the edge or towards the outside of the central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system is essentially all the nerves and then all the receptors associated with it. And we'll talk about different receptors that we see in the body that help talk to the nerves. And so we'll also look at some of the definitions. So I said the peripheral nervous system is the nerves and the receptors. So what is a nerve? A nerve is a group of axons. And remember, a group of axons is part of a neuron. A neuron we'll discuss in greater detail in a future video, but a neuron includes dendrites, a cell body, and the axon to move information. So essentially, a nerve is part of a neuron. It's just the elongated part of it. And when we put a bunch of axons together, similarly, we do it like muscles. When we put a bunch of axons together, we get a nerve. And so that's part of the nerve. So understanding our definitions to start. When we look at nerves and receptors, we can further break them down to two types. Well, they do sensory and motor. So we constantly pick up things going on in our special senses inside of our body. We call those interoceptors. And then towards the outside of the body, we call extraceptors. And then we'll name specific types for pain, for temperature, for pressure. We sense things. The sensory is going to talk to the sensory of the brain and spinal cord. We can talk to just the brain. We can talk just the spinal cord. Most of the time we're doing it collectively. And we tend to do what we call with a reflex arc with some learning in between. So we sense things. And then we have a motor function, which is the reaction usually to a muscle or a gland. What are we acting upon? And that's where we build from our skeletal muscles to move on to nervous system of how do we talk to these muscles. Muscles. So we take sensory and motor to talk to the sensory and motor of the brain and spinal cord. We can further break down peripheral into two types, visceral and somatic. For both sensory and motor, visceral and somatic. So somatic is what we have towards the outside. Typically, we're more consciously aware of my joints, my skin, my bones. Things are more towards the outside of my body. So visceral is referring as we go inside are things I don't have as much conscious awareness or control of, like my digestive organs, my lungs, my cardiovascular system, things that are inside that I'm less aware of what it's sensing, but also what it's reacting to. In other words, whatever you ate today, you don't know where it's at in your digestive tract unless there's a problem associated with it. You don't know where it's at as far as sensing and telling your body, I'm going to absorb this, I'm going to secrete this waste. That's all visceral. Versus somatic, I'm aware of that sensation. My reaction is referring to my somatic motor. So any of my somatic motor is my skeletal muscle control. And then we can further break down motor into two types, visceral and somatic. Somatic, we said, is what we can control with skeletal muscles. Visceral is also known as our autonomic nervous system, or ANS, because it's referring to the things that our body will help us to control without us having to do anything. And sometimes we can train our bodies, but for the most part, our body does it for itself. When we look at visceral, there's two types, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is also known as our fight or flight. 
versus parasympathetic, you'll see it described in one or two ways, rest and digest or rest and repose. So fight or flight, we often hear that a lot. If you're approached with danger, what do you do? Do you fight? Do you run? Do you do both? A lot of times your body will just take over and tell you what it's going to do. Versus parasympathetic is that point to where you're resting and digesting. I like how you're getting ready back for the next time. Remember, as a human species, we really do two things. We survive and we reproduce. And part of that survival is to be able to go and hunt and gather for food, but then make sure we keep our, our young alive. And part of that is fighting off something that can endanger you. If we take it now to like present day, if you think about like when you get in an argument, that tends to be fight or flight. How you handle that argument, it, it brings everything alive in your body when it comes to how you respond to things. Your heart rate goes up, your breathing increases, your vision changes, you start sweating. Things change in your body to get ready for fighting. When you go through parasympathetic, it's our rest and digest and how we then recover. We eat, rest, and recover for the next time that we get in that fight or get in that argument or part of survival. So as we look at everything, all of this information on the bottom, all of this sensory talks to the sensory of the brain and spinal cord. All of this motor is the reaction that comes out of it. So it often is communicated to the brain and spinal cord to figure out what just happened, what is our interpreting, and then what's our reaction to it. And then brought in there is that higher thought, that remembering, that learning, that understanding of when something happens. If you step on something that hurts, it talks to the sensory. You tend to get a reflex, move away, but then there's that higher thought of why did that happen? Why did I just step on something that hurt me and I try to learn from it so I don't do it again? Because we do two things, we survive and we reproduce. This is what starts to get into that thought process. I use the mnemonic same and Dave and referring to when we talk about there's two divisions, I sense things and I react with the motor. In between, I have my integrative or association neurons, that interpretation, but I break it down into we sense things. That's going to go to A, meaning to the brain and spinal cord. So as I sense this, it's going to go connect to the nerves that attach to the spinal cord to talk to the brain as needed. So that sensory information is afferent. Motor goes away, E for away, away from the brain and spinal cord to go out to the periphery to use the nerves to go to the different parts of the body. So same as referring to my sensory is also called my afferent division. My motor is also called my efferent division. If I take this, now we're using afferent and efferent to describe the physical process in which we have these things occur, sensory and motor. My afferent, we call that sensory, all that information goes to the dorsal side of the spinal cord. All of my efferent, which is my motor, will go out through the ventral side of the spinal cord. So what does that mean? As I use my red in this case, this is my Reaction is something was hot or painful, so I'll have specific receptors like nociceptors for pain, thermoreceptors for temperature. Let's say it's on that index finger, that number two finger, and that neuron, which we call a sensory neuron, is going to go all the way through and then come it'll up to a, what we'll call a ganglion. A ganglion or ganglia is a group of cell bodies. So we know a nerve is a group of axons. A ganglia is a group of cell bodies. What this is depicting here is that there are cell bodies within this grouping called a ganglia. So if I go back to my tracing, we use this sensory neuron. It'll hit a sensory ganglia, also known as a dorsal root ganglia, and it goes to the dorsal side of the spinal cord. In other words, our first reaction or reflex is using the nerves to take a highway system to go all the way up to the spinal cord. Once we reach the spinal cord, that sensation is interpreted on the dorsal side of the spinal cord. So dorsal is afferent. Once I leave, and I use an interneuron or an association neuron in the middle to interpret my reaction, my motor reaction will go out the anterior side, which is ventral. So the ventral side of the spinal cord, the blue, is going to the muscles to help me move to create that reflex. 
So ventral is efferent. So we're starting to describe where does things physically occur as they sense things. Once it reaches the brain to spinal cord, specifically the spinal cord, it goes to the dorsal side. My reaction goes out the motor side, the ventral side. Notice this is all going to the spinal cord. Don't forget, it's going to go up and talk to the brain as well. They're independent of each other, so I get that reflex, but then I still have that reaction of, hmm, why did that happen? I keep doing that. Stop doing that. That hurts. My body doesn't want me to do that. So we're not including as we go up to the brain. But how do we go up the brain? We go up through what we call tracks. Within the spinal cord, I have these columns, and they go up literally like columns or tracks. What is a tract? If we look at a tract, a tract is a bundle of axons in the central nervous system. So now you see why it's key to understand there's two systems, central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, peripheral, the nerves and receptors. Within the central nervous system, I have these tracts, and they're within the spinal cord, and we'll see it in different parts of the brain stem, that a collection of axons in the central nervous system is called a tract. A collection of axons in the peripheral nervous system, now we call the nerve. When we put a bunch of nerves together, it's called a plexus. And so we organize them in different areas where they start to come together. And a plexus is a weave or a braid as it braids and comes up to the spinal cord. So as I go back and look at my directional flow, what we're describing is taking how do we do things. We sense all of our sensory is talking to the sensory of the brain and the spinal cord. It reacts and creates a motor to talk to this motor. Now, the motor could be skeletal muscle somatic or visceral, meaning elevate the heart rate, speed up my blood pressure. So I'm using smooth muscle now. Now I change my glands. What are my glands doing? I have the adrenal gland that secretes adrenaline. I can't control how it does it, but it's a motor reaction. So typically, all of this is going on at one time. Even as you watch this video, you're being bombarded by senses, by watching, by hearing, by what you feel in the room. Is it hot, cold? And you make decisions on your own, talking to the brain spinal cord, or the brain spinal cord does it for you. And where does this start to translate? Starting with the spinal cord, we're using the mnemonic DAVE. So as I go back to some of our definitions, we said, well, majority of our nerve cells are neurons, and these are the ones that are helped to conduct that activity to coordinate the body. In a future video, we'll talk about the different types of neurons. There's four types typically. Majority of them are multipolar. And then we'll talk about neuroglia or neuroglia, also known as glial cells. These are the supporting cells, and we'll learn six of them in a future video. There's four in the central nervous system, where I have the brain and spinal cord. Two in the peripheral, where I have nerves and receptors. So we'll name six of these to support the tissue. Remember we said then we have nerves coming out. That's part of peripheral. It's a group of axons. We'll put them together with different connective tissue to hold them together. A group of nerves is called a plexus. When we look at axons in the central nervous system, it's called a tract. And then lastly, we said a ganglia is a group of cell bodies. So we'll see this when we look at the spinal cord. Also, when we look at sympathetic nervous system, there's a chain called sympathetic chain ganglia that we use to communicate this system. This is our fight or flight. So it's just starting with understanding the hierarchy here, where we create that directional flow of information to the brain and spinal cord and then back out and then understanding your definitions. This is key to understanding the starting point of the nervous system. I highly recommend you understand these specific things before moving on to the different types of structures of the brain, spinal cord, and how we communicate the flow of information.